Hello developers. Welcome to my video series on Microsoft Flight Simulator add-on workflow. Today we're going to continue with the process of making an aircraft add-on. And we chose an aircraft in the previous episode and we did some minor work in Blender. And we created a project for the simulator. We exported it using the latest version of the Asobu exporter, version 1.3.3 and using Blender 3.6. And we built the aircraft project and flew the aircraft. And we're also going to use the SDK documentation and the how to create an aircraft section and we'll continue that process. I'll apologize. I said we would be making animations in this episode. I lied. We'll be reviewing the process and the documentation for animations. And basically there are three parts to animations. Making them in Blender, making the aircraft XML templates that will run the animations, and testing and debugging those animations. We'll be updating the model and set up the exterior and interior LODs or level of detail. And this is required before we start the animations. Here's a uh, picture of uh, the folder structure that uh, is used in the system. Uh, we have our project and packages. We have our package sources and the sources have an aircraft config. The aircraft config will point to all the different uh, folders that are in the sim that are default folders for the, the model, the panel, sound, texture. We're going to deal mostly today with the model. The model will have a model config. That will point to an exterior and interior aircraft XML file. And that uh, XML file will point to the LODs, level of details, and the GT GLTF files associated with the exterior and the interior. So they break down the model into that so that you can build uh, the animation specifically for the exterior and the interior. We build the exterior first and then we'll build the interior and finally you'll build the different LODs which as you know is the model that's disseminated down to some major parts uh, that will be seen at a distance in the sim. There is no need to see that G1000 knob in a plane that's two nautical miles away, so there's no real need for that object to be in that particular LOD. And we'll do the LODs at a later point. Right now we'll just do the exterior and interior parts of the aircraft. So in the SDK, uh, the documentation, we have a modeling and texturing section. So that information is where we're going to start. So we'll be dealing with the airframe or the exterior model. And note that they say down here that most of this information is based on using 3DS, 3DS Max, uh, since that's their officially supported uh, exporter and uh, 3D modeling program. So we'll be dealing with the airframe and the airframe uh, associated to it. Uh, our exterior model will be the basis for setting up some things. Our file setup is uh, specifically here where we've done this already. We've done some uh, orientation and scaling and we've done the plan of the of the model and references and so forth. So we've done most of this uh, the layer construction, they use X0. Uh, that's mostly a thing for 3ds Max. What we'll be using is collections in Blender. And uh, we'll be naming our objects in the simulator based on what they do also in 3ds Max. So some of the naming conventions that they have for the model. Uh, we'll be using some blurred meshes, so for the propeller and the wheels and so forth, any jets, uh, turbo fan, uh, 
uh, engines and the wheels and etc. will be using blurred animations. The modeling process they use for uh, the airframe poly count. So we're making a small aircraft, so 200,000 triangles that are going to be in the exterior model. They talk about safety cuts, which is basically just beveling in, uh, in Blender. Turning edges, uh, there's a tessellation process in Blender that uh, they talk about. So we can use the tessellation process to do these turning of uh, invisible edges. Uh, Turbo Smooth, we have smoothing in Blender, so we'll be using smoothing for our meshes. Increasing the mesh resolution, again, we'll be adding loop cuts to the aircraft and so forth. So I don't want to read this stuff to you. You can read this uh, documentation on your own. The drone collision mesh. Uh, I'm not going to use this because I like to use a trick to uh, have the exterior in view when you're in the interior and be able to do things outside of the interior view. And if you put in a drone collision mesh, that'll stop you from going outside. Now we'll get into the animations and we'll be doing all the different exterior animations, the flaps, elevators, rudder, wheels, and then the landing gear. And we'll animate the engines. We won't be doing any wind, wing flex at this point. Uh, they'll be using bones and armatures and I'm not going to get into that at this point. Uh, we'll get into some texturing, uh, or I don't want to get into any texturing. Uh, just some information associated to uh, setting up textures and doing things for the exterior. Uh, we won't be getting into that part of the workflow. I'll leave texturing till the end. We may add some simple colors to uh, the uh, model so that we can see it in Blender and we have some exterior textures already set up and uh, we'll stop here. We'll get to the texturing part and then we'll stop at the cockpit. The cockpit will be the interior model and that's uh, all I want to cover up to in this episode. So let's uh, close some of that stuff up. And we'll just concentrate on the airframe itself and the exterior, and we'll set up the file process here that we're going to use. So we're going to use collections in Blender, and that's the way we'll set up our program or, or set up our model. Uh, we already exported and built the model as a complete single object before, and we should now break it down to a interior and exterior, so the airframe will be the exterior. And this means we're going to export an exterior GLTF or airframe, and then we'll export an interior GLTF or cockpit. And we'll need to change the model config and aircraft XML files, and we'll do that. Let's have a look at what we already have in the uh, Socata project. We have basically an aircraft with a model folder. So we have the model folder, panel folder, etc. We have some basic config files and in the model folder we have a basic aircraft XML and the basic aircraft GLTF that we exported. So we had already exported the aircraft as a single object what we want to do now is we want to make an interior and exterior model. So we're going to delete. Let's delete the basic aircraft GLTF information. So we'll just delete that. And we're going to rename 
our basic aircraft XML file so I'm just going to rename it to the Socata exterior and we can make a copy of this and we'll paste it and I'm going to just make this one the interior XML so we have now two XML files that we need to make our model as two separate entities or two a separate GLTF Let's skip ahead a little bit in the SDK documentation. We'll look at the file initialization that we're going to set up now. So the model config and aircraft XML files that we're going to work on today. So the model config has information in it associated to pointing to the correct uh, interior exterior XML files. And uh, you're going to add some information into the model config like this. And then we'll add some information into the uh, model XML file, which will be pointing to the correct GLTF files. If we look at the model config for the gauges sampled aircraft, so we have the model config here, the information that we're going to use for our new model will be this information here because before what we had was just this we had the models and we were pointing to a single xml file because we had the entire aircraft in one model but now what we're going to do is we're going to expand that and make it a lot larger we're going to add a model options section and a models section. So this section has a lot more data and it's going to be used for the interior and exterior models. If we open the gauges aircraft XML, we have a lot of information associated to it here. There will be two of these, so we'll have a gauges uh, or gauge aircraft XML for the exterior and one for the interior. And we're going, we already made the files associated to it. The SDK examples really don't show us how to use the Asobo templates and their template files. You can see that we have here is uh, we have animations and we have part info if you're familiar with FSX. This is similar to the way it was set up in FSX. But the gauge aircraft here really doesn't use templates. And we're going to be using templates throughout the building of our aircraft here. So what we're going to do is open up the uh, DA62 sample SDK. So uh, if you haven't downloaded the DA62 sample, do so now. And we're going to look at the uh, model config for the DA62. Really, there's no difference between the model config on the gauges aircraft. The only difference is what XML files are pointing to. So we're going to use the DA62 and then let's look at the exterior model for the DA62. The XML here starts using templates. So we have a use template and use the information associated here. Uh, in Notepad Plus you can use uh, an alt command to uh, make the to collapse the uh, all the different tags in the XML
you can expand and you can collapse them. So I'm using Alt 3 here, gets you down to the component level. And if you open up that, it just makes it easier for you to see things here. So we're going to grab the information from the DA62 and use it in our SOCATA here. We're going to copy and paste the model config from the DA62 to our SOCATA model config. So if we've opened up that already in Notepad, we're going to copy the DA62 model config file information there. Copy that, overwrite that. And what we'll do is we'll change the DA62 XMLs to the Socata ones. I just change this to interior. So we have the exterior pointing to, to the exterior XML and the interior pointing to the interior XML. And we'll just save that. Now I explained all this in a previous episode about the sample aircraft projects. And the sim looks in your aircraft folder for the model folder and then it finds the model config. And all aircraft have this file. The model config file points to the two aircraft XML files, the one for the exterior and one for the interior, and the aircraft uh, XML files point to the LODs. So the LODs here are pointing in this particular case for the TA-62 LODs 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So we're going to open the two Socata files in Notepad. Do that here. And this is what we had before because we grabbed our basic aircraft. And that's all they had. They were pointing with an LOD pointing to one basic aircraft. I'm just going to replace all of this with the same information for the DA-62. And I'm going to paste the exterior information here just completely and save it. And I'm going to get the DA62 interior and paste it into my interior version here. What I need to do now is I need to change the LODs here to my Socata one. I'm going to comment out I don't need all these LODs yet, so I'm going to comment out this, and I'm going to change the DA62 here. So there, my exterior, LOD0, save that, and do the same thing for this. Going to comment out these guys and change the interior. And there we go. Comment all that out. And we've got things started for separating the interior and exterior. So now you should have a model config in your Socata folder that points to your Socata exterior XML, interior XML, which are these files here, which point to an exterior 
GLTF and an interior GLTF. So back to Blender now and we'll open up our model, uh, the model that we had done in the previous episode, and we're going to rearrange things and put them into different collections and set the model up so that we can export it. Now we started that, if you recall, we did a exterior, interior, so we could get things uh, working in the model. And I didn't export the panel because the panel gave us some errors. So if we show the panel here and we export, and we export to our uh, folder, our model folder here, uh, we want to be able to use the proper information, so the LOD here, we're going to, oh, now we should make that interior, sorry, and export that, but you saw we got some errors, and this was due to the fact that some of our material was not set properly for the panel. We had done some of them, our default white, we kind of fixed those. There was a particular few nodes that were not set properly. And see if we can go through all, <coughs> sorry, we can go through those. Oh, there's one there. So default white, we'll make that standard. Any other ones here? There's an awful lot of them to go through. I'll probably shorten this. What you should be doing in your model is go through every single object and make sure that we have set the information for them properly. Again, remember we had uh, a concern here with use nodes. We have to turn that on. And then this one was a particular green color. Oh, we should have kept that. So, let's see what we get. There we are. I will just copy the hex information here so that when we use modes, you saw that the base color got changed. We're going to make it standard, and I'm going to paste that value in there just to keep it the same as what it was before. So I basically want you to do that to your model and I'll skip over all the rest of me looking at this just too time consuming. Okay, I've gone through all of the uh, materials and set them up properly. There was a few of them to do. We have a bunch of those materials I've been, I went through them all and set them up as the proper node structure for uh, the Asobo exporter. So we can continue the export as we did before. I can go File, Export, choose that, make the interior. And if you look at the systems console, you'll get some detailed information on the export process, and you know, as long as you don't see any errors, you should be good. So that I did the interior and the panel as one uh, interior object. 
to hide those, show that, select it, and export this as the exterior. So now we should have all of that information in the model folder. We have an exterior XML, exterior GLTF, interior XML, interior GLTF. So we should be good to uh, compile this and build it in the sim. But there's one thing I just wanted to show you. What we did was a kind of a manual process. We did a file and export. The Asobo exporter also has a multi-export. And the multi-export is over in the side window. And you can set up some things so that you can export it by collections. We have the objects. We have nothing set up so far. We have presets and settings. These settings are similar to what you had in the file export here. So you have these settings on the side. Pretty well a similar setup. What you need to do is uh, do the same thing. Add your own copyright. remember things, and then you have the same includes. I usually click that. Transform is default, mesh, apply the modifiers. Materials are okay. I don't use shape keys. The armature is good, skinning. We don't have any, but just leave that. The animations set. Uh, we don't want to sample the animations because otherwise you'll be baking any keyframe 0 to 100, all 100. It takes a long time. So for now, we can uncheck sample animations and just make sure that optimize animations is checked. And that's the setup for getting things here. What you'll then do is set up a preset. So if we add a preset here, number one, it's uh, exterior LOD zero, and the export path will be to our uh, sort our project sources. Package sources, sorry, airplanes model. So the folder will go there. If we enable that, that will be our setup. And we enable anything in the exterior collection will go into this exterior LOD. And we can add a preset. Let's add one for the interior. And the same export path. And we've enabled those two things. And what we want to is what layers do we want in this? Well, because we have two, I've deliberately made an interior, which is just the shell of the cockpit and the panel. Just wanted to keep those separate. So these two will be part of that preset. So if I just click on export now, and I deliberately named those something different, let's see what we get. Should get something. And if we look at the model information, you'll see that I have an exterior and interior GLTF file information. 
that's because the name that I gave this was exterior and interior. So a nice and easy way to do an export. I'm just going to delete these. It was just an example. Because we don't need those for now. I'm not going to use this way of doing things, although it is easier. I'm going to use the manual approach uh, for building the model at this time. But you can try it on your own. See if you can get it to work. It's a real time saver. So let's get to, I'll get rid of that for now. I'm going to export the exterior. Just do that manually again, export. And I'll select the exterior and then export it. I'll hide that. Open these two guys. Grab that. Export. And I'll export the interior model. It's basically just the same thing as I did before, but I just wanted to emphasize that. So let's uh, open the sim, open the project, get that going in the inspector, and let's build it. And uh, let's see what uh, we get. Now, uh, if you get any errors, uh, we'll have to fix those. And uh, just continue on the, the way that developers like to live is build, fix errors, rebuild, repeat, and continue on with that. And in my case, yes, we do get some errors that I forgot about. It looks as though we have some errors here that the nodes share the same unique ID. And that's because some of the files are already have the same name. So if we go back to Blender, let's look for base dud 3 And we have two of them, one in the interior and one in the panel, which is the same name. So this naming convention in Blender is sometimes a little obscure, so I'm going to change that one. And there's a base two and a base one. So let's do this all over again. We'll have uh, everything set up so we have both the interior, exterior, selected, file, export, export the interior, and then we exported that. I'll just get rid of that. Let's uh, rebuild our model here. I have to wait a little while and be patient with the sim. And it looks as though we have no errors. We get zero failed. Everything looks good. Let's go to my favorite airport with my favorite airplane. Charlie Yankee Charlie Echo All Traffic right. Charlie Golf Delta Things Fox Truck Echo good. taking off runway two eight departing cockpit straight out. view. Okay, my eye points are not set properly yet, but if we move our camera around. Look at that, I get a I get a cockpit here. 
and I get a view of the aircraft exterior and I get a view of the panel and everything. Exterior view, okay, there we are. We have an exterior. But, uh, something is not right. I don't have a cockpit with an exterior view. So something has gone wrong. But I don't have any errors. It seems to be okay here. I have no errors. What could possibly be wrong now? Well, let's have to debug something without any indication of error. What's wrong? Our interior view is not showing, so I'm not but where is that information? Well, as it goes, that information is in our model XML. We have an interior exterior view, but remember the model options? Let's review what they really say. We have a with exterior show the interior. Well, so with an exterior view, so when showing the exterior, also show the interior model. The default is false, but we copied it from the DA62 and it's true. So this sounds good. This is correct. So if true, when showing the interior with the exterior, exclude LOD0. The default is false. So this only has an effect with interior show our exterior show interior is true so when this is true this becomes something but with the exterior view show the interior hide the first LOD well how many LODs do we have we got one and which LOD is that that's LOD zero so what we've done here is with exterior show interior but hide the first one we've set that to true we should set that to false. Does it make sense that we should not hide the first LOD because that's all we have is one LOD. So change that, save that. Let's go back here. Let's open it up. Come on, you can do it. You can open up the project. Okay, there we go. There's the project. Select it, get the inspector, build it. We only made the one change. Hopefully this goes through quickly. Oh, come on, it's only one small change. Okay, we got Five skipped, one done, zero failed. Looks good. Let's go back. Get rid of that. I have an exterior view. Come on. Ah, that's much better. Look at that. We get to see the interior from the exterior now. So that has worked out good. So changing that one value, but you have to understand all of that information. So just read over those model options and see if you can figure all that out. Now why would you want to have a true to hide the first LOD? Well you'd want to be able to have more LODs so the second LOD or LOD1 will be slightly different from LOD0. Remember LOD0 is when you're actually inside the cockpit. So when you're in this view, you want to be able to see things. 
But what about when you, when do you want to see the pilots? Maybe you want to see somebody occupying the seats, but you don't want to be able to see those pilots when you are inside the cockpit, but you want to be able to see the pilots when you're looking at the cockpit from the outside. So LOD zero would have no pilots and LOD one would have the pilots. So that's why you need different levels of detail. You want to be able to show different things at different points in time. Another thing is an environmental occluder. You want to be able to have that environmental occluder when you're on LOD zero, but you don't want to be able to see that environmental occluder when you're at LOD one and above. So different LODs will have different nodes to be able to be shown. That's the reason that they have that option. Okay, so we have everything here working, at least uh, showing. But what we don't have is any animations. If I move the joystick or the elevator, we have nothing set up and nothing is working. And I promise we'll do the animations for the exterior in the next episode. Let's look at uh, what we've done so far. We have created the package sources and we've made some new files that uh, will be used in the simulator. But let's have a look at what is now in the packages. The packages is the folder that is created for the simulator to use. You've got all your JSON files, you have your content info for marketing purposes. You have the sim objects again, so you have all of that, and you have your model. But look what we have here. We still have the basic aircraft GLTF file in here when in the package sources, we don't. The sim build process will take everything and it will add to it. It won't delete. The only time it will delete is when you are going to clean the uh, project itself. So this time let's open up the project with the inspector and we'll clean it. And when we clean the project, it will remove all of the information that we had in the packages folder. So the packages folder is now empty in that. And what we have to do is we have to rebuild it. So let's rebuild the package again. And as we build the package, we can see what's happening to the packages folder. So it's building the contents over again. Sim objects, airplanes. So all of that information is being rebuilt. The console has decided to tell us that zero have failed. So that's a good sign. And you can see that the package itself has built the model and the model folder in the packages folder no longer contains the old data. Every once in a while you should clean the package just to make sure that things aren't being duplicated where you are moving things. Let's go back to the uh, SDK documentation and we'll look at the animations uh, just as a uh, view to look at things so that we can get ready for the next episode. We're going to do animations for the airframe. So here's an animations overview and we'll be able to 
uh, set things up. I don't want to really read all this stuff to you. I'm going to start assigning some homework and shorten up these uh, episodes or these tutorials a little bit. So I'm going to assign some homework for you guys to look at the documentation, read through it, animations. Remember that this information is related to 3ds Max. <coughs> Excuse me. And uh, we're just going to go through that and we'll do the same thing. So where they talk about helpers, that's kind of a bone a armature thing in Blender. We're not going to do that. We're going to use empties as our helpers. And we're going to do the ailerons, flaps, the elevators, the rudder, the wheels. We'll do the wheels again. Uh, we're going to work on the blurring of the wheels, uh, the landing gear. So we're going to have retractable landing gear in this aircraft. We'll do that also. Animate the engine. Excuse me. Animate the engines with propellers and blurred textures. Not going to do wind flex. We'll leave that out. So you don't need to fully understand everything because we'll go through it in, in detail, making up uh, what we need to do as far as animations is concerned. But it'd be a good idea to review these concepts because they'll be the same concepts we use for animating the cockpit interior model. And we'll do that after we do the airframe or exterior model. Well, there you have it. We've uh, added some information to what we want to do, and we built an interior and exterior model, and we've exported that information into the sim, and we've gotten a view from the interior with the cockpit, and a view from the exterior. We could also see the cockpit, and we'll enhance that as we go forward. But this episode, we needed to build an exterior model and an interior model so we can separate out the animations for next time. So have a look at the documentation, read it over just to get a step ahead on our next episode. Good luck and see you next time.